Right, let's start her up then. Okay, Let's see if we can get the focus to work properly. That's better. Right, so here we are with our booted Model 2. Um, you can see that um, there's a 58k version. Um, so I've done the move CPM, and uh, I chose to allocate 5k or 6k to the to the driver, which means I have access to 12 IDE drives. Um, presently. We'll talk about that a little bit more later but for now I just want to show you the thing in action. Um, we have a executable called xDriver which we need to run and this will patch the upper memory with the driver. So it tells me that it's using instance number five. There are five different instances of the driver built in and they are chosen depending on how much memory you have free. As you can see we've got 6, 6k free uh, that is the upper memory and that gives 16 IDE drives um, and the drive list we can see all four floppies and we can see drives E to P are IDE drives. Now that's only 12 drives but I'm quite able to switch in any of the missing four drives uh, I just can't have any more drive letters in CPM than A to P uh, we'll talk about mapping later. So, what have we got here? Well, if we look in drive E, for example, this is an IDE drive, and you'll see, if I look at the directory, it's actually quite fast, um, which is a really great thing. Um, if I were to do something like looking at the README file, you know, it comes up pretty quick. There's no disk access, well there is, I mean you, 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 there's no drive access on drive A um, and as you can see it's pretty fast. Right, um, now given that we have all these drives we might want to know which drives are where. So if I were you to, to use this command with a minus P argument, so xmap is the tool that is used to switch IDE drives into and out of the CPM drives um, letter, the CPM letter drives. Ugh, how do I explain that? The logical CPM drives. Um, and when we do xmap minus p, we can see which CPM drives are mapping to which devices. The ones we're interested in here are interested in here are e to p. But let's say, for the sake of argument, that I want to use um, the twelfth master that is master 12, I want to look at it and I want to map it to drive D. Well, there's a number of ways in which I can do this. I can use the XMAP as editor. So, first of all, um, I'd like this change to take effect immediately, so when I have completed doing my editing, I would like to output to the memory, that is the in-memory driver. And I want to use the screen editor, so I say minus E. So now XMAP comes up with the screen with the screen editor, and if you remember, I said I wanted to change drive D, so that's this line, and I want to look at IDE master. I move this over to here, and then it's 12 that I said I wanted to see. There it is, IDE master 12. It's already enabled. Uh, now I press Escape because I finished editing, and yes to change. Now it's written it into the into the driver. Now, it's important to note at this, at this time that the driver changes have only been made to the memory loaded driver, not to the driver disk file. Um, so if you want to write to the, to the driver file so that it takes effect every time you load it, then you can do. You just specify minus OF, output to file, in the XMAP command line. All the instructions are in the readme file that came with the driver package. Right, so if I now look at the map again, you should see now that drive D is mapping to the IDE master drive number 12. And sure enough, if I go to uh, D and then look at it, 
Well, every file on this particular IDE drive, or every drive on this particular IDE device, has got a file name, a, a file in it, an empty file, which identifies which drive it actually is, which IDE drive, and this is master 12. Now, I can just as easily map any device to any drive letter. In fact, I can even map drive A, uh, although this won't affect warm boot. Right, let's have a little, let's have another, let's have another play with it. On drive F is a test, um, which I executed, and it has an awful lot of files on it. I was trying to see how many files. In fact, I was testing the 512 um, directory entry limit. Um, and as a result, you can see there's an awful lot of files here. And they come up pretty quickly. Again, this IDE and not having to access a floppy disk. Um, Alright, so FG. On G, um, I've got a copy of the one of the um, lifeboat disk images, and this one has got WordStar on it, and I can demonstrate WordStar loading. It's quite fast, as you might imagine. There you go, it's done. So you can compare that with the floppy drive if you want. Um, so, oops. The floppy drive in this system is mapped as drive C. That's not part of my X map. It's actually drive two. Um, it's been it's been it's been mapped using the floppy drive's drive select signal. So I have to go to C. Now you can probably see the, the, the floppy drive, you can hear the floppy drive. Do a quick directory on the floppy drive. This has got the same content as drive G. So if I do load word start again, you see the difference in speed. It's quite a bit slower. So let's drop out of here. Go back to E, remind ourselves of the X map, Let's print it, oops. Okay, so what I will do next is to just have a look at E. These files represent a number of utilities and things, some of them are reasonably large. Let's see how, how long it takes to, to copy it to one of the spare drives. Just have a look at O. Okay, O doesn't have anything on it apart from the file, the, the drive identification file I put in there for testing purposes. So what I'm going to do is copy all of E to O. Let's see how fast it is. Okay, it's done. So the next thing I want to do for demonstration purposes is to copy the same lot of files onto the floppy disk drive. And for that I need a blank disk. So I'm just going to fish one out. Okay, I've got a blank disk, might have to format it. Put this into my 8-inch disk. Oops, which way around, that way around. Can I see anything? Let's see if there's anything already on it. Yeah, it's got some stuff on it. Um, Probably don't want to erase this one. Let's try a different disc. Okay. 
right. Uh, okay, this has just got a few bits and bobs which I don't really need, so I'm going to erase them all. Well, that took a while. Um, okay, let's drop back, and oh, I've got E. Alright, so compare and contrast. I'm going to copy all of these files uh, onto the floppy disk. I think I might go away and make a cup of tea actually. So it's done it. Um, I think that illustrates the superior performance of the IDE drive system. Right, that concludes the demonstration. Thank you very much for watching.